when God lavished his love in our hearts what does that mean the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 5 for God has showered for God has lavished for God has shed abroad in our hearts the love of God in other words when that love was completely wheeled into our hearts it is expected for us to reciprocate is it when we reciprocate the love of God that is in the dimension of obedience that creates the ability to obey and to keep his commandments he says so when God has loved us and we, if we are caught up that's what the Bible speaks of perfection of love perfection is a function of love you see when you love him you are perfected we, you see, we walk in perfection in love. You see, when we speak of love, we're speaking of the love of God that we have reciprocated to. Because it's, in, it's in, in that realm of our love in Him because He first loved us that we can keep His commandments. You see, if you don't reciprocate to His love, you are incapacitated to keep his commandments to obey his instructions God has not called you to struggle to keep his words rather don't even think about it don't think about it he wants to see that you reciprocate to his love because hallelujah you have loved him he wants you to keep his commandments because you have loved him shout him in, sons of God we reciprocate to his love and in that dimension as we respond to the love of God we are completely caught up in pleasing his will you see when you reciprocate to the love of God you reciprocate to that love within the standards and the measures through and by which he loved you you see when God loves you he gave his only begotten son when Abraham loved God, he was willing to sacrifice the only son that he had. And I see the greatest thing or sacrifice any man can give God is your sensual appetite. Because that's the struggle. Many are struggling to live sexually holy. Many are struggling to give their finances. Many are struggling to give their time and their whole life to serve God according to his precepts. Because if you serve God according to his precepts, you are going to lose everything that is self. It's going to be tough. You lose almost everything. If you serve the Lord. According to his word. There is a complete yieldedness of the spirit. We reciprocate to his love. According as he did love us. According as he did love us, we reciprocate to his love as he has loved us. Now he gave his only son. So he gave it all. Secondly, Jesus so loved us that he was willing to obey his father. So now love would bring you to absolute obedience to the will of God. And not a percent of the will of God, I will say it again boldly, I don't care whether you believe it or not, not a percent of the will of God in one's life will always oppose your will. What God wants you to do will always be a struggle in your flesh. In fact, what God wants you to do will always be a struggle of the flesh. So, the will of God will first task your flesh. The will of God will always place a demand on your flesh. And this is what the Bible calls holiness. Let nobody tell you anything else again when it comes to holiness. 
the Bible says, walk before me, walk with me, and be ye holy. So if we are to follow the footsteps of God, then we become holy. See, sometimes our concept of walking with God is to feel the Holy Spirit. We want to feel something. Yet, to walk before the Lord, to walk after the Lord, and to follow his footsteps is to look into the accounts of how Jesus walked with his Father. How Jesus yielded himself completely to the will of his Father. Christ had his own independent will. Christ had his own choices. Christ didn't want to do exactly what his father wanted him to do ultimately. But a time came in his life where he had to yield completely to please his father. So that is holiness. Holiness brings us to that, to that point in our walk with God where we say, Lord, now nah, it is no longer me, it is you. And, and it's not just saying it under the strings or saying it under some kind of worship or because we came to church and we felt the holy spirit and then and then we kind of say oh that's a beautiful feeling oh holy spirit i give you all oh. you know that moment is good is it all begins from that point sometimes but now to sustain that decision and to walk consciously in that decision requires conscious effort conscious sacrifice conscious commitment to what you have vowed before the lord say amen to that sons of god so the hour has come and i walk with god that god says be holy meaning walk my way do it my way listen to the voice of my spirit he will guide you he is my holiness the holy spirit is the holiness of god embodied the holy spirit is the epitome of the holiness of god the holy spirit is the holiness of god personified when you talk about the person of the holy spirit actually the person of the holy spirit is holiness